Hi, welcome back again. This week we're going to start looking at simple animations and the basis of simple interactive games. In lecture, we'll learn how to design these programs. We'll see a new design method for these programs. In this video, what we're going to look at is a new mechanism called Big Bang, which helps us build these kinds of programs. Let's start by looking at a couple examples of the kinds of programs we're going to design. On the left here, I have a cat that's marching from left to right across the screen. On the right, I have a countdown that counts from 10 to 0 and stops. Let's look at them again. On the left, there's a cat that moves from left to right across the screen. And on the right, there's a countdown that counts from 10 to 0. Let's ask ourselves what is changing in each of those programs. Well, in the cat program, the cat's x position is changing as time goes by. And in the countdown program, the number is changing as the count goes by. It goes from 10 to 9 and so on. In the cat program, the image we see is changing as the x changes. And in the countdown program, the image we see is changing as the number changes. Okay, let's try looking at it another way. In this image, I have two tables. The left table corresponds to the cat program, and the right one is to the countdown program. What's going on here is I'm saying in the left table that I have a clock that ticks 28 times per second. And so in the left column of the table, we see here's the tick 0, tick 1, tick 2, tick 3, and so on. In the center column of the table, we see that the x-coordinate of the cat increases by 1 each time. So first it's 0, then it's 1, then it's 2, then it's 3, and so on. And in the right column of the table, we see that as the x position increases, the cat moves bit by bit across. This is always the image that's going to be displayed. Over here in the countdown table, it's similar. The tick number 0, the n, the number in the countdown, is 10. At tick 1, n is 9, and n decreases by 1 each time. And then the image, this isn't the number, this is an image of the number. So the image is always just the image of the corresponding number. So in both cases, we have a similar structure. Here the clock ticks, in the, in the CAT program, the clock ticks 28 times per second. The ticks go up, and each time the x position increases by 1, and the image is just based on the x position. In the countdown program, we have one tick per second. The n decreases by one each time. And the image is just based directly on n. So focusing for a second just on the countdown program, let's think about how we could get this to work. We know we have two pieces of behavior. On each clock tick, n decreases by one until it gets to zero, at which point it stops changing. And also on each clock tick, we are shown an image that's based directly on n. It's the image of corresponding n. What I have here are two functions designed to produce those two separate pieces of behavior. The first function is called tick. It consumes a natural and produces a natural. And the purpose says that it produces 1 less than n, but if n is already 0, it produces 0. And there's three examples, so tick of 10 is 9, tick of 1 is 0, and tick of 0 is 0. And the function definition itself is clear. If n is already 0, it should produce 0, otherwise it produces sub 1 of n. Sub 1 is a function you can look up in the help desk, it just takes a number and subtracts 1. So that's tick. Tick, given a current number, produces one less than the number, except that if the number is already zero, it produces zero. So that's half of the behavior we need. The second function is draw. Draw consumes a natural and produces an image. The purpose says that it produces an image of the number n in a white box. Check expect draw four says that in that case, if we call draw with 4, it should produce the text of 4 of size 30 in a black font on top of a square 
of side length 60 that's y. And the function definition follows. Draw of n is just overlay. Convert the number to a string and then take the text of that of size 30 and color black and overlay it onto a square of 60. So draw is the other half of the behavior we need. These are the two separate halves. Tick will count n down for us, and draw will convert n to an image. The question is now how to put them together. First, let's get it clear in our mind exactly how we want them to go together. So as we start with n is 10, this is the countdown program. We want to call draw with 10 and get an image and display it. Then we want to call tick with 10 and get 9. Then we want to call draw with 9 and get an image and display it. And then tick with 9 to get 8. And then draw with 8 to get an image and display it. Tick with 8 to get 7. Draw with 7 to get an image and display it. Tick with 7 to get 6. And so on and so on. That's the way we want to tie these things together. We somehow need to keep draw, calling draw to get an image and tick with n to get the next n and just keep doing that over and over, around and around. Well, that's what the Big Bang mechanism is going to do for us. Let's look at how it does it. Okay, here we are back to Dr. Racket. In the middle, I've got the tick and draw functions we saw before. Let's look at the rest of this file a little bit. There's a require to HTTP image at the top, which gets us the image functions. And there's now a new require, require to HTTP universe, which is going to get us Big Bang. Again, tick and draw are just as we saw them before. Let's focus on Big Bang, because that's what's new. What you'll see when we learn how to design worlds using the design method is that our Big Bangs will be inside of functions called main functions. For now, I'm just putting Big Bang as an expression at the end of the file. So we have open paren Big Bang, and then this value here is what's called the starting state of the world. And we're saying here that the countdown should start off at 10. And then here we're telling Big Bang on every clock tick, call the function tick hand it the current value of the world state, or the current value of n, and it will give you back a new value. And this one means that we would like the clock to tick one time per second. The reason this is written this way, on tick and tick, is that Big Bang lets you use any name you want for your tick function. So we could have named this function here, countdown, or any other kinds of names that would have the behavior we want. And then down here, if we had named this function decrease by one, we would say on tick decrease by one. So here we're just telling Big Bang what's the name of our function that takes the current state of the world and gives us the next state of the world. On this next part, we're saying open paren to draw draw, and this is just telling Big Bang Listen, each time you want a new image to display, call this function draw, hand it the current state of the world, or in this case the current countdown number, and it will produce an image for you, and you should draw it. So the way you want to think about this is that Big Bang takes all the parts of the world, in this case tick and draw, and squeezes them together to make a new world. You see the joke? It's Big Bang, like the beginning of the universe. Okay, we didn't make the joke. Let's watch it run. There we go. There's our world program running for us. And the way it's running is that Big Bang started with 10, and then it ticks the clock one time per second. Each time it ticks the clock, it calls tick with the current number to get the next one. And one time per second, it calls draw with the current number to get the image to display. And let me run it again, and you can see an important point. 
Notice that the display starts with 10. So it actually does the first time around call draw before it calls on tick. So it draws and then it ticks and then it draws and then it ticks and then it draws and then it ticks. So that's Big Bang. Big Bang is a way to take a changing state of a world, in this case a countdown number, and some functions that update the state of the world or produce an image to display and combine them together to produce what's called a running world program. In lecture, you'll look at a systematic design method for creating world programs. And you'll also learn that Big Bang has a number of other options, letting you control things such as what to do if the key is pressed or the mouse is clicked or other kinds of things that you want to do in more interactive programs like these. You can also read more about Big Bang in the help desk.